In this video, I'm going to design, build, and test a little 3D printed remote control hydrofoil. This will serve as a small scale model that I can use to test control dynamics and stuff like that for a full scale hydrofoil that I want to build and ride around the lake on later this summer. I'm hoping to make this project be more like a mini hydrofoil boat than a board. I'm not just trying to like copy an e-foil board. This is going to be much bigger. I'm hoping it'll carry two people. I'm wanting to put like a chair in the middle for the pilot to sit in. And I'm really just starting with a stand-up paddle board because it gives me a nice stable kind of base platform to then build on top of. As with most of my projects, it all started in Onshape. Step one was to import an Epler 817 hydrofoil profile. And then after many days in front of the computer, I turned it into this. A full wing with ailerons, a horizontal stabilizer, an elevator, rudder, and two masts. Most e-foil boards that people ride look like this. It's just a wing, a fuselage, horizontal stabilizer, and a mast. And there's no electronics or anything like that inside, other than the motor, of course. These boards have no active stabilization. They require the rider to do all the balancing by shifting their weight. This takes some skill and practice to get the hang of. The biggest difference with mine is that it's going to be fully stabilized. All three axes of rotation will be controlled by gyros and accelerometers, and the height above the water will be controlled by sonar rangefinders. In order for the flight computer to actually be able to control the vehicle, it needs control surfaces just like an airplane. My design uses four waterproof servos to actuate the two ailerons, elevator, and rudder. Fitting all these in while keeping the drag down to a minimum was probably the most difficult part of the design. Another thing that makes my design unique is that it has two motors and two masts. I chose to use two of these because I'm using regular e-foil masts on the full-scale version, but mine is going to be much larger and heavier than a regular e-foil board, since it's based around an 11-foot stand-up paddleboard. For that reason, I needed to double up on the masts and motors. But also, having two motors allows me to do differential thrust for yaw control, so that might allow me to get away without having a rudder. By the way, Onshape is a cloud-based CAD program which makes sharing files a breeze. So if you want to check out or even download this design, click on the Onshape link in the description. So the next step is a lot of 3D printing. I printed pretty much this entire thing on the Prusa XL. The multi-extruder functionality really comes in handy because it allowed me to print PETG with PLA support material. This makes removing supports super easy, and I was able to print all sorts of crazy geometries without having to worry about overhangs. I also tried the FL Sun S1 for some of the parts, and holy crap it prints fast, but at the expense of accuracy. For any parts that require high dimensional accuracy, I stuck with the Prusa. And dimensional accuracy was very important because I designed my hinges into the wings, and they have to fit together just right. So after a week or two of printing, it was time to start assembly. I designed all of the parts to slide into 6mm carbon tubes from Windcatcher RC. This gives them extra strength and makes the alignment perfect while they're being glued together. At first, I started out using epoxy-based fairing compound, but later switched to Gorilla Glue. Here is the elevator. Its segments slide onto two 3mm carbon tubes. These are the motors I'm using. They're just cheap little underwater brushless motors, and I used silicone to glue the motor mounts into the masts so that they could be easily removed if needed. Next, it's time for the main wing. I'm using high-tech HS5086WP servos for all the control surfaces. For the ailerons, I'm just connecting the servo horn directly onto the control surface. This way, it's as streamlined as possible, and I won't need to have any push rods or control horns sticking out, causing drag. During the design process, I also had to plan for all the servo wire routing, which was a bit of a challenge. Here's the first aileron segment screwing into the servo, and then a wing segment slots in front of that. The built-in hinges are very nice and low profile. After that, I just kept stacking up the segments with glue in between each seam until the entire wing was complete. Now back to the horizontal stabilizer. I got a little lazy with this one and opted to just use push rods for the elevator and rudder control. But also, the horizontal stabilizer is much thinner than the main wing, so it would have been more difficult to embed servos into the hinge line. The elevator and rudder wiring is routed through the two carbon tubes that connect the main wing to the tail. Pretty slick. In order to pull the servo wires through, I had to clip off the servo plugs, but that's fine because those aren't waterproof anyways. I then soldered wire extensions directly to the servo wire and tried to get as much silicone as I could under the heat shrink tubing before shrinking it. That seemed to make for a pretty waterproof connection. Both the elevator and rudder servos were done the same way, and all the wires got pulled through the carbon tubes and through the main wing, and then up through a channel in the center of the masts. The masts are two halves, and those just get glued together and clamped while they dry. Next it was time to figure out something for the fuselage. I decided to go with inch thick XPS insulation foam just because it's easy. I made a step in the front so that it's more like a seaplane float. The step helps reduce drag at speed. Then I shaved down the bow into a nice curve. 
And then after that, I put packaging tape over the whole bottom, because it's extra slippery in the water. I ended up printing too many mast sections, but I decided to just add on the extras, because why not? So now it's going to be a little taller than I had originally planned. These are some end caps that will get glued onto the foam board, and I had to route the wires through the holes in the foam as well. Then that all got glued into place. Next I spent some time shaving down all the Gorilla Glue seams that had foamed up. Here's the rudder. It's extra thin, so making a fully 3D printed hinge would have been a bit more tricky. I ended up designing this hinge more like a door hinge. It just fits together and then a thin steel rod joins the two halves. That ended up working pretty well, but it's definitely not as low profile as the fully printed hinges. The vertical stabilizer screws onto the horizontal stabilizer with some M3 thread forming screws, and then I made some push rods to link the servos to the control surfaces. Definitely not the most hydrodynamic method of doing it, but I don't think this is going to be operating at very high speeds, so it's okay. So that pretty much concludes the build. Before I installed the flight controller, I decided to take it to the lake for a quick test with just a standard RC receiver, directly controlling the motors and servos. No active stabilization going on here at all, just fully manual control. First time in the water. I sure hope these servos keep working. Oh no! <laughs> wow, the wing is pretty heavy, but apparently it's got a lot of buoyancy. Well, it's not too buoyant. I can probably push it down. Give it some down elevator. Oh no, this is bad. What if it flips over? <laughs> this is not a hydrofoil, this is a swath hole. Oh my god, it just works perfectly. <laughs> oh no, 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 don't dig in your nose. Come back, come back, come back. There we go, there we go. Wow, this is hilarious. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> kind of reminds me of like a T-Rex almost. It's little legs and a big long body. Oh yeah, ailerons to keep this thing level with an IMU running dream flight, that's gonna be good. Well, I'd say that was a very successful maiden voyage. This thing is great. So now let's put the flight controller on it. Next, I mounted on a little watertight box with the flight controller inside. This hydrofoil is gonna be running the same flight controller that I used on my robotic wake foil board. It's dream flight made by Nicholas Ream. Once dream flight was all set up, it was time for the first test. So this is just with the IMU stabilization only. I had not yet added any sonar sensors. Okay, so now if I flip this switch, we should be in angular stabilization mode. So you can see the elevator is automatically moving, the rudder automatically moves, and the differential thrust works to help try and stabilize the yaw. And we have ailerons stabilizing the roll, thanks to Nick Rem in a box. Oh yeah, it definitely helps. And the differential thrust works really well for yaw control. Come on. Oh, roll control is really sluggish though. It kind of reminds me of one of those like Thai fighting chickens with really big legs. <laughs> this thing is hilarious. I don't know if this is actually representative of what my big paddleboard is going to be like just because it's so slow. So after spending some time tuning the flight controller gains, I got it to be super stable on all three rotational axes, but it wouldn't always stay at the same height above the water. So to help with that, I'm using these sonar sensors, and Nick graciously helped me out by adding support for them in Dreamflight. So the whole purpose of this project is to add and remove different actuators and figure out what I'll need for the full-scale version. But before I show all those experiments, I'm going to cut to the very last thing I did with this hydrofoil, which is definitely the most fun. I'm going to try and take this thing out into the water with me, but it's going to be kind of tricky. I don't know how exactly I'm going to hold it with the remote as well. It's going to be very tricky, actually. <laughs> Pretty soon, this paddleboard is going to be flying across the lake with a giant foil underneath. It's going to be awesome. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. But summer's almost like half over, so I'm starting to get a little bit stressed out that I might not finish this project in time. When you have stress from a bunch of different sources like that kind of compounding on you, it can really take a toll on your mental health. And that's when the sponsor of today's video comes in, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a service who will connect you with a professional licensed therapist. Someone you can talk to about your problems, what's been stressing you out lately, or even just day-to-day -day life and how it's been going. Many people don't realize that keeping your feelings and emotions bottled up inside you can have a really detrimental impact on your mental health. Doing regular therapy and just talking to someone can really help take the weight off your shoulders. BetterHelp's therapists are licensed and trained to be great listeners that can give you unbiased advice that'll really help put you back on the right track. To get started, step one is to go to their website. You can use my link in the description. It's betterhelp.com slash rctestflight. 
Then you'll answer a series of questions that'll help them match you with a therapist that has years of experience helping people just like you. You'll be matched with a therapist usually within 48 hours so you can get started as soon as possible. When it comes to actually communicating with your therapist, you can do it however you feel comfortable. They support phone calls, video calls, and messaging. Let BetterHelp help you squeeze therapy into your busy schedule in the most convenient way possible. Now back to the video. Okay, so I sure hope this remote is waterproof. <laughs> oh, this is a balancing act for sure. It works, <laughs> it works. Wow, the lake is just dead calm this morning. There are very few things in life that get me more excited than a perfectly calm lake for some reason. So to get the hydrofoil up, I need to Raise the throttle and flip the switch. And just like that, it's up. <laughs> that was easy. Now I'll try and get up on this. Just me and my pet hydrofoil going for a walk. Oh, oh. oh that's so fun. It's so smooth. I love this thing. I love this thing so dearly. This is like my pet. Wow, I can see the motors spinning in there. Oh, that's great. I'm gonna see if I can get some more speed by throttling up a bit. Yeah, that works. Oh, the props are coming really close to, oh, and they're breaching. <laughs> okay, that was a little too much throttle, I guess. I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna, whoops. <laughs> I'm gonna try and move the battery forward and see if we can't get a little more speed out of the thing. So like that, there's Velcro up there as well. Wow, it's really immune to center of gravity shift. That's actually quite impressive. Oh, it's going pretty fast now. The props are really close to the surface though. <laughs> Man, I love this thing. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> it's just so funny. So majestic. It really is just so majestic. Let's do some uh, disturbance rejection tests. So I'm gonna give it a push and look how stable it is. It just instantly corrects itself. Now I'll push it this way. Yeah, this thing is rock solid, man. Let's see how it does with waves. It went right through it. Whew, it's a lot harder to balance on my knees. Oh, it stayed up. Yeah. Wow, it did so well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, turned a little too sharp there. Let's see if I can ride as slow as it while I'm standing up. It's really hard. You have to go in like high alpha mode. Ugh, hard to balance at this angle. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Amazing. Now for those of you who are interested in the control dynamics and stuff like that, I'm gonna go back in time and show all the tests and experiments I did along the way. Okay, I just turned up the proportional gains a lot on the roll and pitch. Yeah, it's pretty hands-off. It just it works super well. It's really stable. I just find it so funny that it just kind of bops along. I think there's some swath hull effect going on. The altitude almost feels stable. It should be technically unstable. Well, if there were no if there was no buoyancy in the masts, it would be unstable. But it does a really good job at just kind of holding altitude by itself with very little elevator input or throttle input. I don't know what's stabilizing it. There must be some buoyancy in the masts. Look at that thing, it's just going along, giving a little bit of turning input, but no elevator input. I'm gonna try and build up some speed here. Okay, now we're cruising. Now we're going quick. Woo! <laughs> okay, now we're going really quick. Wow, look at that. Oh yeah, it cruises, man. Perfect. So today what I'm going to do is turn off various actuators and see how it affects the overall controllability. This is so that I know what control surfaces 
or actuation methods I need to use for the full scale paddle board sized hydrofoil. Right now you can see we have all the axes stabilizing. One of the things I really need to figure out here is whether or not yaw has some adverse effect on roll or not. But yeah, it seems that roll also does affect yaw. Look at that, it kind of leans into the turns. That's actually a good thing. That means I might be able to get away with uh, ailerons, but no rudder. Look at that, it just leans into the turns. That's great. Oh, actually too much. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. There we go. <laughs> this thing is awesome. So now I'm gonna unplug the rudder servo to see if differential thrust can control yaw on its own. Yeah, so it seems differential thrust is still perfectly capable of controlling yaw, even without the rudder on. So that's good. I don't, I wanna, I wanna have as few actual control surfaces as possible. Differential thrust is gonna save me the need for having an actual physical rudder. Now I'm gonna see what happens if you unplug the elevator. This could be disastrous. In theory, throttle could control the pitch, but we'll see if that's practical. Man, I sure hope I don't have to swim after this thing. Oh, wow. Oh, it just totally submarined. Wow, it's actually working. But I do have a slight amount of pitch control with throttle, although it's really sluggish to respond. Yeah, no, I would definitely want an elevator on the real thing. I just adjusted the code so that now the ailerons have both roll control and pitch control. And that's stabilized too. You can see I'm trying to move for pitch control. We'll see if this works at all. Okay, I'm giving it full pitch up command and it's not doing anything. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I think, I think it might be backwards. Oh, no, no, okay, oh God. Elevators, <laughs> what are these things? I guess they're elevons really, but they're just elevons on the wing. They kind of control pitch, like look at that. Oh, no, no, maybe not. The next experiment is to see if I can get away with no aileron control. So we only have differential throttle controlling the yaw and I'm um, hoping that will also kind of carry over to a little bit of roll control as well. So the ailerons are completely unplugged and the rudder is also unplugged. Oh no. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get this thing up. Let me plug the rudder back in and then we can see if there's any sort of yaw roll coupling going on with that. So now we have the rudder being controlled by the roll stabilization a little bit. Let's see if that works. I doubt it will. Oh, you know what? Ah, oh, it almost works before it completely falls over. When it's sideways like this, my elevator becomes the rudder. So from today's experiments, I learned that I really do need differential thrust, elevator, and ailerons, which is kind of unfortunate because those are a lot of actuators to have to worry about, but if I want full control of this thing, that's what we're gonna have to do. There are a couple companies out there saying they're working on stabilized e-foil boards, and this one is saying that they can get away with only a rudder and elevator. They're able to do this because there's a lot of yaw to roll coupling going on here. If you think about it, a foil board and a rider together are basically like a big inverted pendulum. It's the exact same phenomenon as riding a bike. We control roll or side to side balance by steering the handlebars, which actually controls yaw, but it ends up controlling yaw and roll. If a rudder on the hydrofoil yaws the foil to the left, the foil will move to the left, which makes it roll to the right. This is all because the center of gravity is way up high above the waterline but the forces are pushing on the foil beneath the waterline. It's the exact same thing with a bike. The forces are being applied to the contact patch between the tire and the ground. My test platform here did not end up having any yaw to roll coupling, and this is because its center of gravity is not very high. The foil itself weighs more than the foam deck and the battery, so there's no inverted pendulum going on. I might be able to get away with using a rudder to control roll on the full scale version, but using ailerons and differential thrust to stabilize each axis independently will definitely give me a higher level of controllability. So today we've got some sonar action going on. I've got one on each side here. I heated up a rod of this sticky plastic and then I dabbed it on the foam to get it to stick together. I also did the same for these sensors here and that uh, attaches them on there nice and firm. So these sonar sensors measure the altitude off the water and I can map that altitude to either control the throttle or the elevator to control the pitch or both. So we'll see which one of those actuator outputs can better keep this thing at the right height above the water surface. I guess you can't actually see the throttles right now, but as I lower it, it's throttling up. And as I raise it, it's throttling down and the elevator is moving as well. This thing is just barely 
positively buoyant. Look at that, it just slowly floats up. Okay, now I'm in altitude mode. <laughs> oh wow, I think this actually works really well. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, oh wow, I haven't done any tuning whatsoever. I just set the proportional gain at two and it already works. <laughs> no integral, no derivative, no nothing. This thing is just too funny. Look at that, I can drive it with one hand. I'm not giving it any altitude control commands whatsoever. It turns really slowly if I only give it uh, aileron input, but if I give it rudder input, that's when it really whips around in the turns. Like watch this, boom, oop, oh, wrong way, boom. Super sharp turns. Oh, maybe I need a little bit more proportional gain on the altitude. Look at that, now it really cruises. Now I'm gonna try and isolate some variables I'm gonna turn off the connection between the uh, sonar sensors and the elevator so that the sonar sensors are only controlling the throttle. And we, we'll see if throttle alone is enough to control the altitude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's working. The response is just a lot slower. It's not as good, definitely not as good, but it is working. I need to get out of there. I think there's lily pads and stuff over there. Okay, now I'm gonna try elevator only and see how that does. I think it's gonna work better than throttle only, but probably not as good as both combined. I'm gonna use my computer as a surface here. But you can see how the elevator angle changes as this surface gets further, closer and further from the uh, sonar sensors. Let's see, oh yeah. It corrects for disturbances a lot faster than throttle only. Super maneuverable. Yeah, that's good, it works well. Whew, look at that, turns on a dime. Oh, I love this thing. This thing is just so fun. I'm gonna try and do a jump. Woo! <laughs> now I'm gonna turn on throttle altitude control so that we have both again. Let's drive it right into my hand there. Now it's working so well that I can film with one hand and drive with the other. I'm starting to get it ready for the surfboard chase. So I've got a bigger lithium ion battery on the front. That's more weight. And I've also got a 360 cam in the back here, which is also more weight. So I think the speed is gonna be a little bit higher now. It's gonna have a higher wing loading, so that'll hopefully keep the foil down and it'll be able to go faster. I'm in full manual right now, no stabilization. <laughs> and it still goes so slowly. It handles that extra weight like a champ. No problem at all. Stall speed near zero. <laughs> just majestic. You wanna see something cool? All you gotta do to take off is just flip it into sonar mode and it just automatically takes off. <laughs> <laughs> I've got polarized glasses on, so I don't know if you can see this, but look at the size of that fish. He looks like a dinosaur. So there's just one more thing that I want to try out with this, and that is removing the vertical stabilizer. I think the differential thrust mapped to uh, the yaw, stabilized yaw PID will be enough to keep the yaw stable without having a tail fin. No rudder, only differential thrust. Yaw definitely drifts a bit more. Whoa, actually yaw is quite unstable now. With no stabilization, I can still control yaw, but it drifts around a lot. Like you can tell it's way less stable. Now I'm gonna turn on stabilization. Yeah, it definitely feels more locked in with stabilization turned on. I would say that's enough yaw stability. So I probably don't need a vertical stabilizer on the real thing. So that concludes my experiments. Now I know that if I want my giant 11 foot paddleboard sized e-foil to have active stabilization on all three axes, then I need ailerons, elevator, and differential thrust. I'm gonna get to work building that and hopefully you'll see me riding it across the lake before summer's over. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, bye.